The following screencast will provide you with a demonstration of Acknology's event marking system. The event marking system is extremely powerful and not only does it allow you to mark an area of interest while you're recording data, but it also allows you to take further measurements from the data during the analysis process. It can be used to identify a region of data within the file and then allow you to look for further points of interest, add further event marks, or take measurements and paste those measurements either into the journal file or into an Excel file. It's also possible to average the data around a particular event type. Now I'm going to replay some data so we get the impression that we're actually recording experimental data. So here, if I auto scale this, we have two channels of data. On the top we have uh, ECG and on the bottom we have a respiration waveform. The easiest and most fundamental way of marking an event in the software is to hit the escape key. When I hit the escape key we get a red triangle and this appears in the what we refer to as the global event bar and I can enter a label right there and each time I press the escape key I can add a different comment. So that's probably the easiest way of adding a label. The other important piece of the event system is actually the event list. The event list shows you every event that appears, event mark that appears in the data. And it's divided into um, multiple areas. It's essentially a long list starts with the global markers then if there are any markers specific to channel 1 or any that are specific to channel 2 at the moment we've only got global event types in here the software always puts in an append marker and this is the first one and only segment that we've recorded and starting at time point 0 and then we have the two manual marks that I put in one at the 27 second mark and I labeled it start and a further one at 44 seconds labeled end and whenever you select these marks the software jumps you to that point in the recording so that's the sort of fundamental way of marking an event during your recording but there are also some other options that will allow you to customize that if we go to the setup manual event insertion hotkeys we have the ability to customize the type of label and event that is added when you hit a particular key we've already seen how the escape key is the default option but we can also use the F1 key and here I can type in a label, actually, I'm going to delete that. So I've just got one. Um, I'm going to use, um, oops, actually, waveform on set and F3. I'll use waveform end and then use a long arrow. That's about that. So oh, the long arrow I'm going to add to my respiration channel. The others are set to global for F3, global for F2, and global for F1. In fact, 
I'm not going to worry about F1. I'll just leave my others F2, waveform onset, F3, waveform end, and F4, my long arrow, which is associated with the respiration channel. Now, if we start replaying our data again, open this up. Again, if I hit the escape key as I did before, I can enter any comment I want. If I hit my function key, F2, we've now got an open, opening parentheses waveform in the global bar, and that's the waveform onset indicator. And then if I hit F3, we get the closing parentheses. And then if I hit F4, I've got a long arrow in my respiration channel down here. So the I'm just going to stop this. The event keys can be specific to all the channels, as in the waveform onset and waveform end, and also to a particular channel. In this case, we made it specific to the respiration. Now, if we come back over to our event list, we can see that now under respiration, we've got one event type that's specific to the respiration signal. And we can jump through any of these. Also, by using our right and left bar, with key rather, we can advance manually through them from one to the next. Now the part that's of particular interest when you're using the events, I'm going to condense this down a little bit so we can see all of our labels. We can now use the fine cycle peak detector to identify our waveform onset and waveform end events. And we can take measurements and paste those down into the journal or we can measure a different channel, a different signal. So to go to the fine cycle, um, the fine cycle dialog box, we can select events. And actually, I have this one already set up, but I've selected waveform onset. It's a global event, and I'm going to go to waveform end. I'm just going to leave these set at zero. So it's going to be at the beginning of the starting event and then at the end of the end. And I'm going to hit find all cycles. So the software has selected between these two events. And actually, I had the software this, the fine cycle detector set up so that it would output an event at the point of maximum on the respiration channel and I marked it with a star and I can quite easily change that to minimum and on respiration and this time I will mark it with a flag and I'll mark it on channel 2. I'll say find all. And there it is. Now the software has put a flag down at the minimum point. So we've marked the minimum and the maximum within this selected area. Now the find cycle will allow you to select a region around an event. So actually I'm going to find my waveform onset. It's not a matched pair, it's just going to find the one waveform onset. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to look at one second before and three seconds after. So now the software has found this area of data, which is one second before my waveform onset, 
and three seconds after and it's placed a marker at the minimum point within that selected area. And then we can use these events for further analysis. Acknowledge also uses the events for its own automated analysis routines and if we go to locate actually back up a little bit make sure I'm selecting the correct channel go back in to the analysis menu and select locate ECG boundaries the software has now marked my P, Q, R, S, T complex and add a label down and then with the different analysis routines the software will then go through and measure each of these or the intervals between them and paste them into Excel or into the journal file. If we don't like where a measurement is placed we can use our pointer select the offending event and by placing our finger on the ALT key we can move that event around and then when we run the analysis the analysis will take the measurements from the point that we believe to be the best if we're unhappy with where we've placed a mark we can use the zap tool and you can zap many or all of the events and then you can go back in and paste any new events. The event tool also gives us access to any of the labels that are added to, or any of the labels that are part of the event system. So for example if I believe my P onset is there, you go and do that I can change my event type either by coming over here or I can go to my right mouse button and change the assignment so this time the peak of my P wave, I'll put that here and so on and so forth. Alternatively you can jump to any point in the record. So if we're interested in this event here, it's right there, peak of this P wave, or I can clear them all out. Again, if I condense everything down, and we don't want any of these marks over here, come over here, and we can remove those. Or select clear all from the event list. And there we go. So there's many ways in which events can be added. They can be added online, they can be added offline, and they can be added through the automated analysis. If we come back in here again and go back to the setup manual event keys, one thing that we didn't look at is sequential types of event marks. So we can say each time the F6 key is presented, we can add a particular label. Okay, so now I've added uh, a series of sequential event marks to the F6 key. And if we replay our data again, I'm going to hit the F6 key, and we have the event type start showing up and there it is on my channel down here 
If I hit F6 again, it's now saying slow. That was the next mark. Fast. Hit it again. Max. Hit it again. Stop. And we'll hit it again. Recover. And this type of sequential marking is really useful if you have a very defined protocol that you're running through and you know that you want to just quickly hit the event keys and not have to worry about entering text or anything like that. Everything is predefined for you. If you've got students or technicians that are using your template files over and over, you can have a standard operating procedure, have that procedure set up so that the technician or whoever is running the experiment just has to hit the appropriate function key at the appropriate point during the experiment and the correct marker will automatically be added to the data. All they have to do is make sure that they hit the correct function key at the correct moment in time. But as we've already seen, even if they're a little bit tardy in entering, but they know when the event started, if we put our finger on the Alt key, select the event, we can move our event marker over to the appropriate position. So it's a very fluid system that allows you to maximize the power of a digital data acquisition system. And again, if we come over to our event list, we now see start, slow, fast, max, stop, recover. Those were the events that I entered. They were all user type 6, which was the F6 key. And Again, there's only one global marker in there, which was uh, an append marker, and that was because there was only one segment recorded. Okay, that concludes this demonstration of the Acknowledge Event Marker system.